my main camcorder died. I heard that. That's terrible. This old, this old, what, this was what I was using. I was using the HDMI output going to the computer to, this was the camera for RDA and now it's gone. So Pour one out, everybody. It's six years this thing lasted us. That's pretty good. Yeah, this, this was a, this was a little workhorse here. My producer, Mike, actually got this for me when I started doing videos and stuff. This, <sighs> and so... We say adieu. I may be able to fix it. I don't know. It might be able to be resurrected. We'll have to find out. But man, so if, if my side of the video, at least to the people at home, looks a little different, that's why. I know you're seeing me from a slightly different angle because I've... Yeah, super exciting. So I, ha I do have to say one thing this week. What? Yesterday was Dan's birthday. Oh? Yes, he's over there playing his video games right now. But uh, Dan turned 47 yesterday. I thought you were going to say 21. Yeah. Yeah, you turned 20, 47. That too. So, happy birthday, Dan. Finally, someone makes me feel old. I mean, it makes, it makes me feel young. Because, yeah. Yeah, because he's old. We're the same age, but he's much older yeah. than both of us. He was born in the decade before us. Oh, oh shit. What a decade. Oh, shit. I know. So, so we're just gonna sit around and talk about how old I am. Yes. yes, pretty much. Yes. See, Dan, she is your fiance, so this is her. You know, she, she's entitled. I'm just like a lamprey on this. I'm latching on for the ride exactly. on this one because you know it's it's an opening. I'm taking it. So, you know. Now, what Dan can't see is the chat is just scrolling with people wishing him a happy birthday. Yes. Thank you, everyone. And being much nicer than we are. <laughs> yeah, because we suck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're awful. We suck. Um, okay, so yeah, it's it's a little odd. We're doing this on a Sunday this week because tomorrow I am driving to Minnesota to help Linkara move into a new spaceship. You don't know. It might be true. And uh, so I'm going to be out of town, so we're, we're doing this on a Sunday night, which is a little odd. And yet we still have... Plenty of stories to work. Is Linkara moving into Paisley Park? No. He is, isn't he? No. No. You can tell me. He's not. I mean, just between you and me. No. Is he just gonna like squat at Paisley Park? No. Don't don't. All right, Tara, I adore you. Don't don't say the words Linkara and squat in the same sentence, because that's what you call it. Squatting. Yeah, but that's just just bringing up a whole different mental image. I mean, they're going to turn it into a museum, but it's like 60,000 square feet or something. There's plenty of room to live there and nobody would ever know. Yeah, but just let's let's not. Let's not. What's Paisley Park? Oh, my God. Paisley Park is like Prince's compound that he owned he lived there it was his recording studio it had a nightclub in it like prince legit had basically a little like enclosed prince city and now that he has passed away they're going to turn it into a museum kind of like in the great I, I think the people managing it are the same people that manage graceland nobody asked me what graceland is i will turn this show <laughs> I know that one. It's that. It's that uh, Paul Simon. That shit. It's that Paul Simon song, right? That's what that yeah. is. That's that Paul yeah. Simon song. Yeah. Uh, dude, I would never do Graceland, but I could see myself going to Paisley Park. Dan was a big Prince fan, and so. it's it's not far. I, I could see myself doing that. All right. Nash and Tara were born when Dan was twelve. No. 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 Thank you, but no. Yeah, we're not, we're not, we're not quite that young. He's yeah. not quite that level of. Thank family. you, but no. I am thirty nine. I will be forty in February. Uh, don't remind me. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> you should totally. Away. When's your birthday again? October. <gasps> it's coming up. Yes. We well, should totally have like a big four zero spectacular. No. No, I don't want to be old. Mike and I will send you like stripograms while you're on the air. You can guys can die in a fire. Forty is just a number. It's a big number. Eh, 
eh, I'm not that worried about it. People asked me if I was freaked out about turning 30, and I was like, not really. I hate I mortality. Like fucking grown up, so you mortality know. sucks. All right. Yeah. Well, now that Are we've you the trophy wife, yes, yes, I am. Yeah. Now that we've gotten it's this participation trophy, but you know, whatever. Now that we've got all that out of the way. It is once again that time tonight. Uh, but we have some spectacular things. Not necessarily good, but they are spectacular. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call... What the fuck is wrong with you? And, you know, Tara, I know you're going to disappoint me on this one. Because you're not going to get this reference. I already know it. Dan's going to get this reference. If you... He of little faith. Every time I ask you if you've seen a fucking movie, you say no. I might surprise you. Let's just call this one... Here we are. Born to be kings. Princes, if you will. Dude, come on, of course of I get that universe. reference. I owned a kind of magic on cassette, okay? Man. My second boyfriend ever was obsessed with Highlander. I think we watched that movie like 26 times. Man tries to rob store with sword, finds clerk also has a sword. What are the odds? From Toronto for a few tense, surreal moments Friday night. Oh, that's a Pittsburgh's corner store was transformed into was transformed into something out of Game of Thrones. How, How did Dateline Toronto if it happened in Pittsburgh? I don't know, but Elton Hobson wrote this story. Elton Hobson, you could have made a Heimler joke in the first yeah. line and you went with Game of Thrones. Well, because Game of Thrones is what the kids get now. If he said Highlander, people would have been like, what? What's a, what's a Highlander? Is that like a new draw? It's because a would-be robber tried to hold up the store with a sword, only to discover the clerk was armed with a sword of his own. Happened this, Seriously, what are the odds of that? Happened this past Friday night in the Perry Market in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Two unknown juveniles ran into the store, one of whom was brandishing a sword. The unknown man holding the sword ran behind the counter to demand cash, that's when the store clerk reached for a blade of his own, a full-length scimitar. Oh, man, that's a not-fucking-around sword. Both would-be robbers booked a hasty retreat in the face of the scimitar-wielding clerk. One of the robbers, the, the balls on this guy, tried to grab a handful of shirts, which he promptly dropped upon running into his partner on the way out the door. Don't fuck with a guy with a scimitar. <laughs> Holy shit. Like, that's not a... I saw Highlander and I bought a Claymore at the Ren Fair. <laughs> that's, that's a not fucking around sword. It's way easier to hurt yourself with it, but for the first, first of all. That's that sword that big motherfucker in Indiana Jones had. Yeah, it's fucking curved, and I think it's bladed on both sides, and then it has this big thing at the top, like... Go fuck yourself up royally, you don't know what you're doing with that thing. This... we Well, the video is just... A, everybody's gonna play the video, play the video! It's just the news report, guys. It's just the news report. There's not much to see here. Okay, apparently there's a Toronto in Pennsylvania. Why is there a Toronto? That's just confusing. Oh, okay, that guy's got a sword. And now, this guy's got a sword. And they both got swords. Jesus H. Christ, that's a sword. Yeah. Okay. What are the odds of that, though? <laughs> I don't expect that. You figure you're going to surprise them coming in with a sword. Like, they probably get guys with guns all the time. Like, yeah, I know! Blow them away with our fucking sword. Holy shit, we picked the wrong store. It's, that, that is very... That is fucking... That's, a, that's Highlander right there. Yeah. Only, dude, you are a sucky immortal. You're not allowed to run away from the fight. You're not Maybe allowed to do that. 
firmly ground. I, I don't I don't believe that a, a convenience store is holy ground. If you've ever worked at a convenience store, you know those are not holy ground. Clearly, you've never been stoned enough. Have you ever been in a in, in a convenience store bathroom? No. That is that is the opposite of holy ground. That is the the complete opposite. I'm saying I think that Jay and Silent Bob would feel differently. <laughs> And they might be mortals for all we know. Well, I got to respect this guy. He didn't want to get a gun because guns are kind of randomly dangerous. He just got a big ass sword. Yes, yeah, swords aren't randomly dangerous at all. Well, whoever hurt themselves with a sword. Okay. Go wrong there. Well, okay. Swords can't just go off. No, it can just lop your fingers off. Yeah, but you have to be involved with the sword for that to happen. Sure, or you could throw it in the back seat of your car and not secure it properly and get into what would be a re relatively minor fender bender and get decapitated instead. That's like a dead like me kind of death. That's Rube Goldberg-esque. I'm just saying, they're not exactly safe. We have young people in the audience. Let's not send the message that swords are safe. <sighs> okay, true, true, true. I'm not, I'm not gonna... Kids don't play with swords. There we go. Is that better? Oh, that, that's our, the more you know. There you go. Um, that's our PSA. There we go. Kids don't play with swords. All right. Don't rob a store with a sword, because they might have a bigger one. <laughs> Moving from one bad movie pretense to another, this next guy. I will give him points for effort on this shit, because he made a fucking effort. However... I think his, his efforts could have been spent a bit more wisely. Fugitive drug dealer disguised as elderly man. Yes, I saw this. Doesn't fool police. Sean Miller, 31, from the village of Hyannis, described by police as, quote, a mysterious masked man walked outside of a property surrounded by police wearing the realistic disguise. He'd been on the run from the police since he was indicted in April 2016 in connection with the drug tra trafficking charges. He was finally arrested on August 18th when police saw through the disguise. I mean, you have to admit, it is pretty well done. That's some Johnny Knoxville bad grandpa bullshit. See, to me, it, he doesn't so much look like he's an old man as one of the 62 dwarves from the Hobbit movie. Yeah, he does, right? <laughs> like, all he needs is some big ridiculous hairdo and a pipe. Yes! And you have Dwarf he, with no personality number three. Oh I'm my not, god, don't you know! Don't yell at me about it. They were not good movies. You know who he is? He's Hoggle! Yes! He's fucking Hoggle from Labyrinth! Oh my god, that's... I can't unsee that now. That shit's on He's fucking Hoggle! Now they do, like, a man that age would have some... Loss of volume under the eyes. There's, it's way too volume. There's way too much volume under the eyes. He should have some bags there. So, but other than that, I mean, the liver spots are great attention to detail. I mean, dude, I give you the credit for trying. You made yeah. the effort. You, you, you put in the work. And it was creative. It was creative. And if you'd gotten away with that shit, you would have been like a legend. Yeah. But... This is, you look like something out of Jim Henson's workshop. Yeah. Obviously someone is going to go, wait a minute. No. He looks like, did you see the movie Black Mass? No. He looks like the very end where they put Johnny Depp in the old man Whitey Bulger makeup. Yeah. And they know it's bad, so they only show you like half his face in the elevator. Maybe if, if I understand you're trying to avoid the police and, and try trying to get by, but this this is this is some shenanigans bullshit. Okay, here's the thing: like, if they're looking for a bald guy with a beard, maybe your disguise shouldn't be a bald guy with a beard. <laughs> Even if it's an old bald guy, right? Like, maybe your disguise should include a wig. Yes. 
this is, I mean, this. Like, say, if I were going to go on the run from the law, I would probably not buy a red wig. Because they'd be looking for a redhead. With cats. Yeah, because the cats would totally be coming with me. Yeah. It's, it's just, if he'd, if he'd maybe gone with something a bit more conventional, might have got, but this, this was some, this kind of shit will work in like an Adam Sandler movie or some shit. It would too. This doesn't work in the really real world. That's, that's not how that works. This, this is a little too, this isn't like a funnier dies. Life is not funnier die. It, it's not how that works. Speaking of not how that works, have you ever had someone take your picture and you immediately thought, oh, I don't want that on the internet? No comment. <laughs> One guy in China thought he had a solution for that. It was not a good solution. Man thinks he's destroying the internet gets arrested. This is from okay. Weifang. It's from Weifang. After participating in a local neighborhood square dance, man in Al Gore with a goatee. No. <laughs> man with China apparently became worried that photos would end up online. According to several Chinese news sites, uh, a man in Weifang became upset after photos were taken of him square dancing, an activity often enjoyed by older women. The man, however, noticed people taking his photo and felt he was being mocked. Concerned about possible online humiliation, the man allegedly dismantled the local optical network, but thinking it was the whole internet. No. Is it even physically possible anymore to disrupt the whole internet? Like, you can't do it. No. It's too big. It's just, it's that planet of evil from the fifth element. Like, the more you try to destroy it, the bigger and stronger it gets. Like, the internet owns us. It's bigger than we are. This is reminding me of, of the IT crowd. Have you seen that show? No. Oh, you got, get it on Netflix, watch it. You and Dan would love it. Dan would love it. Um, Two of the guys in the IT compartment, department convince their manager that a little box with a blinking light on it is the entire internet. And that's the first thing I thought of here. Yeah, it's not gonna, that's not gonna work. No, it's not gonna work. I, this, I, I just, <sighs> the internet is so fucking redundant. It's so big. Th this is I what. Don't, I don't think you can take it down. I don't think anybody could take it down. As a tech oriented person, I quite often have trouble trying to explain tech things to people who just, they don't give a fuck. They just want to turn it on and the thing fucking work. They don't give a shit how, how it does anything. They just want and to And we've displayed this two weeks running as you try and talk me through using the fancy microphone you got me. Yeah when I didn't know that I had to turn it on. So th this is what happens when those type of people crash headlong into the real world implications of the internet, but they think they have a good idea. Yeah. And it is not, cause look at the, look at what this motherfucker did. He took out the internet for the entire fucking local area, at least in terms of hardline internet. Right. Every goddamn cell tower was still working. And that's what I mean. Like, I never thought about it before now, but I don't think it's possible. Like, you know, Donald Trump at one point said, well, we'll just take the Internet away from ISIS because they're using the Internet to recruit. So we'll just take the Internet away from them. And you're like, dude, uh... obviously you're a moron who has no idea what you're saying, because that's not a possible thing. It's not possible. You can't do it. The internet cannot be stopped. Even the, the fucking blob. <laughs> the best part about this is as he thought he was destroying the internet, everybody whose internet connection he was fucking up was whipping out their cell phones on their cell connection and taking pictures of his dumb ass going, hey, 
the fuck you do? It's by the fact that there's pictures of this on the internet. <laughs> exactly! You probably would have been better off just letting the square dance pictures go because maybe 50 of your friends would have laughed at you <laughs> instead of the entire <laughs> world. Everyone. I And we're, ma we're, we're laughing at you now. Not just, I'm not laughing at you for square dancing, dude. You do no. you. Have fun with your square dancing. You just enjoy yourself, man. So what if grandma likes it? You can like it too. It's cool. Yeah. But don't, don't, this is not how the internet works. No. You fail. You are failing. Oh. Okay. Tara, I, I just have to ask. What is the stupidest thing a guy has ever done to impress you? Whew. <laughs> I just <laughs> I love that response. <laughs> I mean, there's the guy who was a huge bitch to at Comic Con because he tried to he tried to get in my face about Lost trivia. I schooled him in front of his friends. I was a huge bitch about it. And if you're listening, I apologize. But come at the Queen, you better not miss. <laughs> there's the guy in college who drove a bunch of staples into his leg to show me <laughs> that he doesn't feel pain. <laughs> That didn't impress me. That just showed me he was dumb. <laughs> Those I are the top two that come to mind. I still just love the, oh. Yeah. Gotta flip through the Rolodex. Yeah, you gotta flip through there. Oh, well, this guy certainly, I think this one kind of beats those. We're, we were all young and dumb. Man tries to impress woman. Get stuck between buildings. Again, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh student oh. trying to impress his, a date, tried to jump between two buildings in Oakland and got stuck in a space about 16 to 18 inches wide. My understanding, says the Pittsburgh Public Safety Director, Wendell Hirsch, is that he was trumping, he was jumping between two buildings and fell between them. Basically, he was stuck in a 16 to 18 inch crevice and fell three stories. Shush. Amazingly, he's fine. Wait, how big is this guy? Because that's like a foot and a half. Like, that's pretty big area. He has. Does this guy have shoulders like the fucking rock? <laughs> He has an ankle injury, but otherwise he's fine. But in order to get him out of there, they had to do this. They had to cut through the wall of a restaurant. Uh, Kudoba. Is that Kudo Quid Quidoba? Kudoba, yeah. Kudoba. They had to it's cut... Like Chipotle, but without the E. coli. They had to cut through the Kudoba wall... They're gonna have to close the restaurant for two weeks because of this little shit. Well, the bad news is you didn't get a date with the girl, and even if you had, you're not taking her there. <laughs> They're gonna remember you. They're gonna put your picture up. Why would that impress? Like, okay, guys, here's a little here's a little tip from from your auntie Tara. Girls are not impressed by random feats of stupidity. Like, if, if, if the same act could be prefaced by, hey, y'all, watch this, not a panty dropper. Now, guys are impressed by stupidity. Yeah, so if you're trying to get some guy tail, cool. Go for it. That might work. Women, not so much. Like, we're just going to laugh at you on your way to the <laughs> ER because you're a moron. Yes. And the store laughed at him, too. I'm going to read the, the sign they put up. Um, this is from the, the bagel store next door. Attention, guests. Today, we will not be opening at 7 a.m. due to the man who thought it would be a good idea to jump our rooftop to impress his girlfriend and got mm -hmm. stuck between the walls. Sorry for the inconvenience. Please see the manager for a coupon on your next visit. The Shade. Oh, no. The shade they threw on his ass. Yeah. That's, that's a big old scarlet oh. letter. What letter would that be? 
I'm thinking D for dumbass. I would go with this one, but right here. Right, right here. It's a classic. Yeah. Smash Mouth. Do you remember that summer? Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry. It'll take you a few minutes. You'll get the joke. You'll get there. You'll and get then there. you'll wish you hadn't because that song will still be in your head three days from now. <laughs> anyway, let's go from being one, stuck in one uncomfortable place to, okay, an even more uncomfortable place. Wow. Like the back of a Volkswagen? He wishes. He wishes. I. Kids, if you're watching this live or recorded, whatever you're drinking, put it down. Whatever you're eating, put it down. If you have a weak disposition, you may either want to mute right now, pause, or skip to a later part of the video. Is that because this is going to be really funny or really gross that we're putting our drinks down? Well, you might not. Like, I have Pepsi. I don't want to snarf Pepsi. I've done it. It's really painful. You are about to see a picture that's going to make you go. It is so adorable and so disgusting at the same time. Those two words don't go together. And yet... Bless this guy's heart. His heart was in the right place. His head, I don't know where the fuck that was, but here's where both of those things ended up. Stuck in a public toilet tank for one hour. Look at that picture. That is so pathetic. That is pathetic. That is so pathetic. I think you should probably look up the word adorable. It's just... Uh, uh. I don't see how that's a party. Kato Bertstein Larson tried to pick up a lost cell phone from the public toilet, but got oh. stuck. I was up. If it falls in the porta potty, you don't even want it back, man. I was obviously swim slim enough to get into it, but not slim enough to get out. I was down there for an hour and it was very unpleasant. That's the understatement of the century. Was he says, it was disgusting as hell. The worst thing I have ever experienced. Animals were down there, too. Oh, no. Larson explains that a friend of his lost his cell phone into the toilet while using it. The two men agreed that only Larson was slim enough to have a chance to climb into the tank. All right. First of all, that's a bro. Yeah. That is a, that, that's a ride or die right there. That is, that is, you know, you, you are going, that guy, that is a guy you stick by forever. Because if, if you have your friends say, yeah, I'll go in there and get your phone out. However, he's also an idiot. And it wasn't even his own phone. Yeah, it, that is some heavy altruism, but you're a moron. I do feel it necessary to point out that this dude has the word gratitude tattooed across his forehead. I have to, yes, we have to show you that's. And then respect on one eyebrow with a little upside down umbrella. I can't tell what's on the other eyebrow. Like, I'm curious what his job is, because unless you're a tattoo artist, I feel like you're almost unemployable with that business. I mean, you know, he's he's I'm conflicted here because, yeah, that's that your heart was in the right place, man. Kudos for you. You are a good dude. You're just not a very bright dude. No. Seriously, because getting that phone back, number one, that phone is fucking toast. Yeah. You don't want that phone back. One, it's bricked. Two, even if by some miracle of science you could get it to work, that smell's never going away. Three, warranty doesn't cover that. Hell no. And no. four... You might have gotten the phone out, but fuck only knows what diseases you have contracted. Right. You can get a new phone, not a new any organ you can think of. You you can come out of there with shit that would make the CDC go, ooh, we haven't seen that before. Yeah. That's a neat one. Can we have some of that? What are they doing? I don't know. I'm just hearing entirely fun and exciting new noises I've not heard before. <laughs> Uh, 
Oh, Peggy. Yes. Oh. Someone has a toy mouse. This is like, do you, do you remember there was those two um, memes where good guy and, and the douchebag memes? I remember Goofus and Gallant from Highlights Magazine. Well, it's kind of like that. All right, that works too. Um, this is Gallant. Jared Leto's Joker was Goofus. <laughs> See how that, it, it's, it's like two sides of the same coin. Yeah, two sides of a terrible coin. Yes, and they're both imbeciles, so. Like, that coin isn't <clears throat> currency anywhere. We have one last one this week, and this is straight back into... F fuck only knows what the fuck happened here. This comes to us from Nebraska. Man strips, drives pickup into Southwest Plain. Dan called this one. Yeah. Authorities say only we were going to be covering this one. Authorities say a man wearing only boxer shorts stole a pickup and drove it into a Southwest Airlines plane at an airport, causing minor injuries to three people on board. Um, Police Chief Tim uh, Conahan says an officer spotted the man outside the terminal Thursday evening, screaming that people were trying to kill him. I okay, mean, gonna be in a minute. <clears throat> When officers approached, the man ran, climbed a fence, undressed, and stole an airline pickup. Okay. If people are trying to kill me, I understand climbing the fence. I even understand... Well, except that, as Dan told it, that fence had, like, barbed wire and shit. I would, if someone's trying to kill me, I would climb a barbed wire fence. Would you take off your clothes first? That's the thing! I understand the fence. I understand stealing the pickup truck. Why the fuck are you in your underwear? And why are you driving a truck into a plane if you're trying to not die? Yes! If your goal is to not die, I generally recommend not taking a vehicle made of steel and running it really fast at a much larger vehicle made of steel. That's not a good way to not die. I swear to you, this sounds like a bath salt story. I mean, there has to be some kind of substance involved here. These are not the fun... <laughs> the, I think we have a new category. We have the fun drugs and the fun yeah. for everybody else drugs. Because <laughs> when you're on the fun for everybody else drugs, you become the entertainment. Was this fun for everybody else? Passengers were boarding this plane. Wasn't fun for them. Well, it's fun it for us. Chase chase around the mostly naked guy at the <laughs> airport. <laughs> It's fun for us. Yeah. And we're really all that matters. We're really all that matters. Yeah, if people are trying to kill you, getting naked is not going to make them want to kill you less. Not unless you are ridiculously hot. It might, you know, even otherwise, it might make them pause for a minute or two. They're still going to want to kill you. Yeah, I mean, it might give you a little bit of a head start just for <sighs> shock value. But in the long run, they're still going to kill you. Yeah. Your your dick is not a magic defense against being murdered. And uh, I, again, like the, the best, if, you're, if your goal is to stay alive, naked jumping a barbed wire fence, nope. driving a truck into a plane, no, nope. not good plans. No. Uh -uh. Not good plans. No. That's, those are the opposite of, those are the bad plans. I mean, God, can you just imagine being on that plane? Just how did... Mommy, there's a naked man in a truck! Yes, dear. That's nice. How do you get to this point? <laughs> how do you get here? That's a bad weekend, is what that is. This is... Uh, they're just filming The Hangover 4. It was Bradley Cooper. Ugh... Weird idea. Imagine the, instead of ending American Beauty with with the, you know the murder scene. Imagine ending it with this instead. With Kevin Spacey tearing <laughs> ass across the airport tarmac. Why not? Just I don't know where that came from, but just let's do this instead. And then the the plastic bag. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, the first thing we learned this week is just because you're naked. That's not going to stop people from trying to kill you. Nope. We've learned sometimes 
Altruism is not enough. Brain help too. Yes. Don't get in the fucking toilet. God, that was just... I can't even... I mean, that... it's a better reason than the guy that did it to... to peep at ladies at the yoga. True! Station. I mean, I, I respect this man's heart. That said, there's almost no good reason to jump into a porta potty No. So I just I got... almost, because if I say none... I'm confident that the chat will scroll with, but what if you were being chased in zombies and that was the only place to hide and you were immune to virus? Like, I know if I speak in absolutes. Fuck your pedantic, pedantic asses, asses, yeah. So I'm saying almost. I'm pretty confident there's no good reason to do that. We've learned that stupid things do not impress women. Don't do them. No. Women... Are not, your buddies might think you are hilarious. And if the chick is egging you on to do the stupid thing, guaranteed she's not into you because she just wants to laugh. No, at you. She just wants you are you are not the you are not the bouncy bouncy entertainment. You are the fucking ha 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 entertainment. She's not laughing with you. Yeah, you're not the stripper. You're the clown. Yeah. Um, we've learned that just because you put a lot of effort into foiling the authorities. You have to put it into the right outlet. <laughs> Not just... A, they'll never suspect a thing, yeah? Yeah, they will. Too much volume under the eyes, I'm telling you. And if he had eye bags, he would have gotten away with it. And finally, we've learned... If you try to rob a place with a sword, some motherfucker just might have one of his own. Yeah. A bigger one. A much bigger one. That's... Crime don't pay, kids. Yeah, that... that You take... Get your... You, there can be only one shit out of here. Yeah. <laughs> well, so, well, Junior, the channel says, I learned don't hold up a fucking Highlander. That too. And that works whether you're talking about movie or Scotland. 